This is the Hawk Vision. We're going to install it in our Hawk 5. There's two different models. The base model does not have any additional components nor resistors, but it does have a solder bridge right there. And this is the model that you use if you just want to mount a Unify into your Hawk 5, or if you want to get a Unify with Smart Audio. The Hawk Vision with real pits has some extra circuitry, like some resistors right here, and a transistor here on the back. This model lets you physically power on and power off the VTX on your Hawk 5, in addition to getting smart audio. Let's go ahead and install it. First, you'll need a Unify Pro Nano. The Unify Nano comes with the Unify Nano itself, a button, antennas, and wires. We'll set the wires and antenna aside. The button can be installed right here. I find it breaks too easily, so I usually don't install it. The best way I found to install it is to use Silly Putty or some sort of rubber to help hold things in place. This is wall tack. What I'll do is I'll stick the Unify Nano down into the pad there and then drop the Hawk Vision on top. Once you have the Unify nestled in place, I'll go ahead and add some solder to these different points. Note you don't need to solder every single connection on the Unify Nano. Just the two on the left and the two on the right. The ones in the middle are meant for a camera, but because we don't need to do that, because the Hawk Vision has its own camera mount, we're going to leave those unsoldered. Also down here on the bottom, I'm going to add another one. This isn't for any electrical purposes. This is just to give some reinforcement so that the board doesn't come loose. And optionally, you can solder these over here on the side with the buttons. Uh, just gives additional reinforcement, or if you want to attach the button, you can attach it right there. Be very careful when installing this because there are some capacitors and resistors very close to the edge of the board. And if you pop those off, you'll have a bad time. If you look closely, you may notice that there's a optional spot for a resistor above the Unify Nano. That's because some Unify Nanos actually don't work very well with certain boards. And as a workaround, TBS started shipping resistors with some of their Unifies. If you didn't get one, it's not a big deal. Try it, and if your Unify works just fine, you could ignore it. But if you find that you don't get reliable smart audio, add a 1K or a 10K resistor right there just to pull the smart audio pin to low. Next, what we'll have to do is remove the existing video transmitter. Best way to do that is with either solder wick. You can buy this for a couple dollars on Amazon. Or you can use a solder sucker. Either one works just fine. Go ahead and heat up these pins right here and remove as much of the solder as possible. It's best to add some flux to help the solder flow easier. Once you've successfully removed the VTX, clean off any additional solder that might be left on some of these pins. It'll make it easier to put the new VTX on. The next step is you'll want to take this header and slide the plastic so it's more in the middle. That makes it easier to solder in without having to get underneath your flight controller. We'll want to solder this in on the second row of pins. Don't make a mistake and solder on the first one because it won't fit. This is the TX3 and RX3 pin which is what the Hawk 5 uses to talk to Hawk Vision. The next step is to go ahead and drop the circuit board down in place. You don't need to push it all the way down. In fact, it's probably a little bit better if it's up closer to the top. You can optionally reuse the foam that comes with the original VTX, but I find it's not necessary. Go ahead and tack this in place. If you ever need to remove it, I find it's best if you use as little solder as possible. I'll start in one corner and just tack it just enough so that there's electrical connection. Make sure that everything is then locked in place and finish with the other parts. And just like that, your Hawk Vision is installed. Next, we'll need to take the pigtail and attach it down. I find it best to use some liquid electrical tape or hot glue at this point 
so you can keep this pad from popping up. Be very careful if you use something like a GoPro mount with a zip tie because I have found it can actually snag on this UFL connector. Adding liquid electrical tape is purely optional. It just helps give it a little bit more secure of a connection. To access smart audio, first you need to go into Betaflight and change the TX3 pin to be a smart audio pin. Then from your transmitter, go middle stick, and then left, and then up to access the OSD menu. Then we'll come down to features. And using the right stick, just like a joystick, come down to VTX SA for smart audio. Then come over. If these are blank the first time, don't worry. Just change them left and right till you get to something like Fat Shark. Um, and you can change the channel to any one, one through eight. And then it shows your frequency and then your power. It can either be 25 or 200. Note that the VTX can only do 25 or 50 milliwatts. Um, 200 is the same thing as 50, so uh, either 25 or 50. Come down to set, confirm, and then just like that, it'll change channels. So let's go ahead and change to Fetzer Arc 7 at 25 milliwatts. Set, confirm, and it will change. Again, if it doesn't work reliably, you may need to add a resistor on top of that, any value between 1,000 ohms and uh, what 10,000 will be fine. Now, if you have the real pits enabled model, you can go ahead and enter some of these commands. Once you've done that, you can then define which switch will toggle the video transmitter on and off. I have it set to this switch. And just like that, it powers off. A nice thing about this is if you set your switch to be low by default, your VTX won't power on when you first plug in your quad. Which makes it safe if you're at a race that you could plug in and work on your quad, or if someone else is flying, you don't have to worry about accidentally knocking them out of the air. You can physically power on, and then flip the switch, and then your video transmitter will power on. That concludes how to install Hawk Vision. If you have any issues, please leave a comment below. We'll be happy to help you out.